Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and as you can see here, we are looking at a blend file full of cameras. And the cool thing about all these cameras is they all have completely realistic camera motion applied to them. And I'll show you how you can do that in a second here. Okay, so before we get into how to do this, I want to share real quick about why this technique is so cool. So when you're working on a digital shot, one of the biggest ways you can give away the fact that the shot is digital is by having the camera kind of float through the shot as if it's kind of like a disembodied ghost or something. So having realistic camera motion will get you a huge amount of the way to having a shot that's more believable. And furthermore, you can save a huge amount of time by having a blend file full of these cameras that are moving realistically. So we can just go ahead and pick one out and throw it in our digital scene which I will demonstrate later. But first let's talk about how we can get these cameras to realistically move. Alright, so let's start from scratch here. I'm going to go Shift A and add in a camera. I'm just going to grab this and move it all the way over to the side. And let's rotate this a little bit on the X axis so it's just kind of facing the same direction. Cool. So with this new camera selected, I'm going to go Control 0 and that'll make it the active camera. And that's probably what we're going to want while we're working on it. And once we've got it to be active, let's split the window down here and open up the movie clip editor. And let's open our footage. I'm going to scrub through and find my end frame here. This is just a really nice long clip. So I'm going to go control and end on my keyboard to set the end frame. And let's just scrub through this and see what we've got. So as you can see here, it is just some kind of chill, ambient, camera shaking kind of stuff going on here. And it's really nothing too dramatic, because the less wild the camera move is, the more generic it is, and the more we can apply it in different situations. So I've found something like this can generally be the most helpful to be able to throw in a scene. Of course, we can go more wild and do a completely 3D track that's got custom movements that we need exactly in our scene. But for now, we're making a camera move library, so these are going to be things we want to apply all over the place. So I think this will be a pretty good example to work on. If you've never been in the tracker before, it can seem a little bit daunting at first, but we don't need to know too much to get started here. I'm just going to find a high contrast point like this corner here and hold down control and then hit the left mouse button and that will place a tracking marker. And then if you hit E, it'll pull up this nice pie menu and you can see we've got track markers backwards, track forwards, we've got clear path, all sorts of fun stuff. But right now we're just going to be looking at tracking forwards and backwards since you can see I'm kind of in the middle of the footage, let's start by tracking backwards through the footage. And that was pretty fast there. But you can see our tracking marker is sticking to that high contrast area. If you hit L, that'll lock your view to the tracking marker, and you can see a little bit better how it's doing. Let's track it forwards by hitting E and then going this way. Cool, that tracked all the way to the end. Pretty quick stuff. And right now, we're not doing a 3D track where it solves for the location of the camera. I'm just going to be doing a tripod track. That'll just solve for the rotation of the camera. So let's find another area. I'm just going to drop in this tracker here, track it backwards, track it forwards. And the nice thing about having really basic footage like this is it's not too hard for Blender to track because we don't get that crazy motion blur and most of the features that we're trying to track actually stay in the frame, which is really nice. Okay, we really don't need that many tracks if we're doing a tripod track, so I would say what we've got here is pretty good. If we go over to this panel and go down to where it says solve, I'm just going to check tripod, and now if we hit solve camera motion, you can see it tracked. So let's go control space and go out of full screen here and apply this camera solve to our camera here. If we go over into this side panel in the constraints, we can go add object constraint, and camera solver. And let's uncheck active clip because if we have a whole bunch of cameras and they're all set to the active clip, they're going to be moving the exact same way. So let's specify the footage that we want it to move with. And you've got the name of the footage here. 254 is the last three digits. So let's find that. Cool. And now we've got our camera. And if we look in the camera view, you can see it's got this nice kind of randomized but perfectly realistic camera motion going on. And we can animate the location of this camera if we want, and since it's got some nice randomized rotation, it won't really look bad if we just throw in some basic location keyframes. Cool! So that's one camera. 
I've pretty much done the same with all these cameras here. You can see them wiggling around. And just having this blend file with all these cameras that have completely realistic camera motion can be a really useful thing. Let me just demonstrate that real quick. I'm going to select this camera that's got a 3D track, and I'm going to go Control-0. Let's just kind of view what kind of motion we've got going on here. Sorry if you can't see the lines very well. That's looking pretty good. Looks like we have about 180 or so frames of animation here. So I'm just going to copy this camera and put it in a completely different blend file that I'm working on right now. So I'm going to go Control c copy object, and let's save the scene here so we don't lose anything. And this scene here is something I'm working on at the moment. This is just material view. But if we go Control v you can see our camera gets pasted in here. And let's go to top view so we can kind of see where it is. I'm going to grab it and move it around to about this point and rotate it. And you can see the path of the motion stays behind. We don't have to worry about that at the moment. OK, let's make sure we select our camera to make it an active selection and then go Control-0 to make it the active camera in our scene. And if we play the clip forwards, you can see we've got our perfectly realistic camera motion going on here. And we might want to kind of patch this up a little bit and rotate it and place it where we actually want it. But that is how having this blend file of camera moves is so dang useful, because you can just grab one of these, drop it into any scene, and have your realistic camera motion. One last thing for cameras that are tracked, if you want to kind of show the path that the camera goes along, what we could do is we can go into the object settings here and down to motion paths and just set the range of frames to be as far as the camera is getting tracked. So you can see the camera stops here and so that's probably as far as we want to calculate the motion path. Around 179 I think is the correct distance. So you can just say frame 1 to frame 179 and then calculate the motion path. And if you hit OK it'll just show you the motion that the camera is going along. And so if we have a huge file full of cameras and we kind of want to know which ones are doing what moves, having those motion paths will be a really good way to visualize how those cameras move when you just want to jump in, grab one, and then paste it in your scene. All right, so that is about it on how to make your library of realistic camera moves. If you found this useful and you're interested in visual effects in Blender, I've created a completely free video for you, and in this video, I go over five tips that'll help you integrate your CG creations into live action footage. And if that sounds interesting to you, there's a link in the description, so give that a click. But hey, we've come to the end here, my friends. I hope you have an excellent day, and cheers.